In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this penny board with integrated LEDs, a unique look to the skateboard design, angled design on the grip pads, and it has a slick water dipping paint job. My favorite feature about this build is the unique pressure switch to help save the life of the battery. The on and off switch is also available as well, and also you have an LED control with more than enough settings you will need. Once I settled on the design I wanted to go with, I printed them out on 8x11 sheets of paper. Cut the design out, tape the design together so we can get ready for the next step. Trace the outline of the skateboard only and the four circles. We'll come back and do the other part later. Cut the design out using a jigsaw and stay close to the line as possible. Don't go over and don't go too far away because the further you go, the more work you have to do when it comes time to sand. If you don't want to cut the holes in, you can skip this part if it's pointless to you. But if you do, I'm using a one inch bit on my drill press. Sand the edges until you get to the pencil mark. I'm using a roundover bit on my trim router to take off the sharp edges. So to lay out the wheels, I need to find the dead center of the board so that I can place them appropriately. With the wheels in place, score the boards and then mark them so that I can take it over to the drill press. I drilled the holes out then came back with a larger bit to countersink the holes. I used a scrap piece of wood to set the right depth before I went to my permanent piece. On the table saw, I cut down a few pieces of wood that will ultimately hold the LEDs in place. I want the LEDs to sit flush with the edge of the wood, so I used the caliper to measure the thickness of the LED strip and then score that onto the wood. Then use the table router to remove this unwanted piece. That seemed to work out fairly well. I don't want to stick it yet because I want to put some paint on this, so we'll do that later. Because the LED is going around the whole bottom of this box, we need to take off the corners only on the short side so that it take a little stress off the LED while it bends. Perform the same task on both ends of the short pieces. Glue them together and I'm using a pin nailer, which is barely holding them together, but the glue would help a ton. And this doesn't need to be extremely strong because we're not messing with it ever. Mark a few screw holes. I'm just using four. Measure the power switch, score the measurement over onto the bottom section of the wood so you should be under the lip. Cut that out and we can insert the power switch. Now 
Now cut off the excess you don't need and be sure you cut it off in the right spot, not on the lights. Cut it off in between the lines. The LED controller is a bit bigger than the LED strip itself. So I need to notch out the top and the bottom so the LED sit exactly where I want it to. Now notch out a section for the wire to pass through. Refer to the template and trace out a piece of wood that would sit into this opening. Cutting out this hole can be tricky depending on the kind of tool you're using because I didn't want to go outside the line. I'm using my multi-tool to knock this out. As far as this piece of wood that sit in the opening, drill an eighth inch hole in the center, half inch from the edge. For this pivot point, the best thing I could come up with was a nail cut in half to give me this pivoting point. So notch out this section here deep enough so that the wood sit flush on the top side of the skateboard. I'm using a single pole double throw limit switch, which is what I'm using to give me that spring action on this piece of wood. I bent the tip to make the relay trip that much faster. So how this work is once you step on the skateboard, you press the switch in, which then triggers the relay. The relay should not be bothered at all with weight applied to the skateboard because it would be distributed evenly over the skateboard for the centerpiece is flush with the surface of the skateboard. I notched out a piece of wood because the battery pack I'm using come with a power switch which I don't want to remove so I drilled a few holes in the battery pack itself to screw this down in place. If this hang out too far it could potentially be a problem so I'm going to fix that with a piece of scrap metal that I have laying around. Installing this will prevent the wood from coming out too far and possibly breaking off the pivot point. And now to wire the switch up, all you need is a short piece of wire. In my case, I'm using a 22 gauge piece of wire with some spade connectors. We're gonna make up two of those. Install one leg on the normally open on the relay and the other leg on the common. Now the reason why I'm removing this is so I can cut off the corners so that I have a location to route the wires. And now we need to make up two more cables doing the same thing for the power switch. So at this point we should have four individual conductors just dangling around. Using a razor carefully separate the positive and negative. Now it doesn't matter which one you cut, only cut one and strip both ends. Now if you can see the diagram on the screen, hopefully my explanation makes sense. Now grab one leg from the power switch, one leg from the limit switch, and one leg from the battery pack and twist those together. So my whole idea behind this was to do two things. When you step on a skateboard, light up the LEDs, and also when you flip the switch, complete the circuit to light up the LEDs. The way it's wired, either path closes, it energizes the LEDs. And now twist the remaining wires together and cap them off. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Ah, look at that. It actually works. Apply some primer to sear the wood a bit because this piece of wood is going for a swim. Before I get started, I'm using some stuff that I had on hand and I'm really trying to get rid of them. So that's what I'm using for my project today. Instead of doing the usual hand painting, I wanted to try something new to me, which is known as water dipping. This process is simple, but my technique can probably use a little work. There's nothing special happening here, just a huge bin full of water and I have regular enamel paint which I'm spraying inside this thing, trying to create any kind of crazy looking design. I want the middle light as possible because that's where my grip pads would be. And my board is black because that's the base coat I want on the board. And I would say, put a base coat that you want on it and go from there. Now, I did say my technique can use a little bit of work. I should have went a bit slower also attach a piece of wood on the back side so that I had more control of the board and I should have went the opposite direction. Now to avoid the board getting a second layer of paint on it, get the paint out of the way, clear that water first and then pull the board out. Face the grip pad down and going back to the template, we're gonna trace out the template on top of the grip pad with a razor so that we score it. It's tedious work, but we have to go back over it again to make a complete cut so we can remove the cutout pieces. As you notice, I have a number on the piece I'm removing and the piece that's staying, and that's to keep a good reference point on where to put those back. Paint the box for the LED. And now that the board is dry, I'm gonna put a touch of white in these holes to give it some contrast. Now this is why it was important to number the individual pieces as we was taking them off because we're going to use this back part as a template to put the grip pads back in the same location. As I'm installing the grip pads, I wanna be careful that I don't press them down all the way just yet because I don't want them to get attached to the unwanted grip pad. And I want to make it easier to remove that once I'm done placing these in the right location. I'm using a roller tape and anything round in this case would probably work to help smooth this out. So as a tip, if you're building something like this, once you're placing the grip pad in place, make sure that it doesn't overhang on the middle section because it would get wedged in the opening and it won't pop back up. So just take a razor and remove any overhang. At this point, we can assemble the skateboard and I start by installing all the screws, flipping the board over, and then installing the LED trim.
I have this tinted piece of plexiglass which I salvage and that's what I'm going to use as the cover to the bottom of my skateboard. This wood is higher than the trim and I have a few plastic spacers which I cut to create a flat surface for the plexiglass. So during the whole build process, I had a bit of a flaw and I did not notice it until I was pretty much done with the skateboard. And the problem is once you lean on a skateboard, this wheel would rub here. And the quick fix for me was basically taking a razor and shaving off the edge. I was really hoping that it wouldn't interfere with the LEDs and turned out it worked out just fine. And now I can spin the wheel at any point. So if there was a tip that I could hand off to you is definitely to stay away from the wheels or directly beneath the wheels. And I think you'll be fine if you do that. So I love building these projects and I'm glad that I can make the mistake so I can save you a headache. Like always guys, thanks for watching. My name is Glenn and I will catch you guys on the next one. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel already. I upload videos very frequently and you never know what you'll see next. So you don't want to miss out on my next project. Peace.